Hey guys, it's Melissa Morrow with Vintage Bee Design, and today I'm gonna show you how to turn a dollar store pumpkin into one of these cute little vintage style jack-o'-lanterns. I have always loved this vintage style, and I'm gonna show you my inspiration and then how I created him. So this project is inspired by this DIY vintage style jack-o'-lantern video that I saw on YouTube. Uh, they started off with a dollar store pumpkin as well, and mix up some glue and water, which is what I am doing here, and then used the plies of paper towels. So basically, after I mix up my glue and water, and I didn't have a specific ratio, just kind of wanted to make it a little thinner, then I took my paper towels and I started pulling them apart. If you're using a two or three ply paper towel, that's how many plies you'll need to pull apart. Mine only happened to be two ply, and so I used that. I also had some napkins that I had used in a decoupage project so I started off by just sort of layering my pumpkin with the paper towels, the individual plies of paper towels in a typical decoupage fashion, putting on the glue and then putting the paper towel down and then putting the glue over. And this just gave me a base for my face to stick to and also a little bit better texture. I tried their method um, from the video of putting the eyes on the facial features on first and I could not get them to stick to the pumpkin with the glue combination. So by laying a paper towel down first, I found it was easier to get the facial features to stick to the pumpkin. Once I had a nice base layer, then I am just taking little bits of paper towel and sort of balling them up and getting some glue on them. And then I am attaching them to the pumpkin face. For me, this was the most difficult part of the project. I'm not really sure why, but I didn't find that it wanted to stick all that easily. Lots and lots of glue was necessary here and um, some real patience, not getting your fingers stuck to the pumpkin and peeling things off. But it, if you're just patient with it and work in small steps, it is certainly doable. It's not a huge skill set that you need. It just requires a little bit of, again, patience. Just, just keep plugging away at little bits of it. I'm gonna leave a lot of this footage in here so you can see how I built the face. I will add timestamps if you want to move ahead to the next step.
And so here you can see his little face all outlined with the paper towels. I am gonna go ahead and give him some sort of rosy, sort of higher ball cheeks. A lot of these vintage pumpkins have more of the big rosy ball-like cheeks. After I have all the facial features done, I am basically going to use that extra tissue paper, apply some glue, and then spray Put the tissue paper down and then spray the tissue paper and then use the glue on top of it again over all of the features and because i had issues with this uh, these paper towels not sticking to the pumpkin as well as i wanted i thought this would sort of add that little bit of extra to make sure that it could not come off by having the paper over it as well and sort of sealing those in place this way they couldn't be picked off they couldn't just fall off i would have something over them that was um, sort of sandwiching them in place. It was very sheer. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do a couple layers of this around the entire pumpkin, effectively giving a little bit more texture and smoothing it out, but really ensuring that all the facial features stay in place until this is completely dry. The next step is going to be adding a stem, uh, a nice thick pumpkin stem. And to do this, I used a floral wire just from some old flowers that I had around and then gave it kind of a spiral, stuck it into the pumpkin with some glue. And now I am wrapping these same paper towels around that wire, trying to create a nice thick pumpkin stem. I definitely used a lot of glue to make sure that this stayed nice and tight and did not expand as it dried up. I wanted this to um, really keep the features and keep it exactly the way it was that I sculpted it with the paper towels when I was done. I also made sure to layer at the base of the pumpkin stem um, a thicker area so that it would look like vines and, you know, kind of how the top of a pumpkin looks and it's got those sort of thicker areas. I wanted to make sure I created that with the paper towels as well. And unfortunately, I seem to have lost the footage, but basically once this was dried and I let it dry for two days so that it was completely 100% dry, I actually just painted the entire piece in DIY paint vintage linen. And then I'm going back in with DIY's Queen Bee and I am starting to make the stripes based on my inspiration piece. Now I'm gonna do a technique called floating. Basically you need a damp brush and you dip the corner of your brush into one color paint and then you sort of blend it part way across the brush and then float the paint. And what it does is it has a nice colorful edge and then it fades out into nothing as you go 
um, further out onto the brush because it's just fades out into water. And I'm gonna do this along the eyes and then along the stripes. And I'm doing this with Firestarter. Now that I've floated all of the edges of the queen bee with Firestarter, I'm gonna move on and use DIY's Salty Kiss to go ahead and paint the stem work. Then I'll use layered chocolate to create all of the dark areas. After that, I'm gonna use that same floating technique, but this time with a smaller brush and the color marquee, which is a red. And I'm gonna go all along those same areas where I did Firestarter earlier and add a red, a sort of a darker um, tint along the edges. And I'm gonna make sure I do this under the stem work as well. And here I'll use my base coat of vintage linen to add teeth to my jack-o'-lantern. When that's dry, I'll go ahead and use my layered chocolate to start enhancing the darker features like the eyebrows and the line around the eyes. The next step is to use Marquee to highlight the nose and the mouth. Well, the lip area anyway. Next, I added a little bit of layered chocolate to some watered down salty kiss. And this is gonna give me uh, a little bit of a darker, a little bit of a darker color and consistency that I'm going to sort of wash over the green areas. I don't want to cover this completely. I do want to leave some of the brighter green showing in the cracks and crevices, but I do want just a little bit more of an earthy tone versus this brighter green tone. Coming towards the home stretch, it's time to accentuate those a little rosy cheeks, and I'm using that with Marquee, and then I'm gonna layer a little bit of Fire Starter, and then a little bit of Queen Bee, and a little bit of the Vintage White. And I'm just gonna sort of build this up until I get a nice rosy around the outside, fading into the other primary colors of the cheek so that it blends in with the rest of the pumpkin, and it's not just these big red blobs on the side of his face.
After all his features were completely done, I took him outside and sprayed him with a couple coats of a poly uh, spray. I wanted to be sure that he was completely sealed. And since this is DIY paint and it is reactivated by water, I wanted to ensure that none of my perfect lines, blended lines got blurry or distorted. So I did take it outside and spray it with some Krylon Poly. Um, now I'm using DIY dark wax and I am just using a stencil brush and I'm gonna wax and rub back the wax all over him until he is fully waxed. So I think that the only things that I would change about him if I were redoing him, and I do actually have another project plan on doing a little bit of a different technique to create a little guy like him is I would have, instead of starting up top, I should have started the, with the mouth because the mouth does seem really low. It's, you know, here's the bottom and the mouth is way down there. So I would have started with the mouth and then each of the features would have come up just a little bit. And then the other thing I would have changed is that when I started off the pumpkin, I started making the street, the stripes, the like the beige and the and the yellow stripes here, I started them going the actual ridges of the pumpkin. And by the back, I realized that wasn't gonna work anymore, that they were too narrow. And so I just kind of ignored it. And you really can't notice it when it's just sitting on a shelf. And so I think in, in hindsight, I would have made the width here for this white stripe larger so that his nose was all the way on and it was more centered. And um, rather than just going by the the lumps and the pumpkin. So I think that that would have been a little bit better. Otherwise, I think for my first try, he's really pretty charming. Um, I like him a lot. I love this vintage rustic look. So I'm definitely gonna try a different technique with, I have a three stack pumpkin. Um, so that is, that is old and the colors are not pretty anymore. It's all faded. So I'm gonna try a technique like this on him. So that video should be coming up soon. If you love videos like this, please be sure to hit like and subscribe and share our video. It really helps us get more airplay and um, make more videos like this.